Hello and welcome to the second video in the guide to testing your trade idea. This video is all about the visualization stage and I'll show how to take a trade idea and see charts showing entry and exit events. That's going to involve writing some chart script which is a basic building block for the rest of the phases. You'll also learn how to easily see if your particular entry point has an edge on its own with the POT PO template which stands for probability of touch, probability of expiry. And we'll also see how to view all entry events from an entire list of stocks over the entire history of data. Remember from the first video that the idea I want to test is Bollinger Band crosses and in particular if you can build a profitable trading system based around Bollinger Bands alone. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is to express the idea in a chart script. So to deal with chart script, go over to the report viewer tab in the application and the chart is in there. And what I like to do when I'm working on a chart script specifically is just to drag this and place it into the center of the screen to give it the uh, most amount of screen area uh, so that I can see a lot more. All of the built-in chart scripts are in the chart scripts tab over here, which I can pin to the side. And you'll note there's a section in there for my scripts. That's where you write your own scripts. And there's a section in there for the system indicators that are built in, the system scans that are built in, and some other things too. So I'm going to add a script into the my scripts area. And I'm going to do that just by pressing the new button over here. That's going to give me a window that I can enter some chart script. Now, we're dealing with Bollinger Bands here, and the idea that I want to test is across above a Bollinger Band, be it the upper Bollinger Band or the lower Bollinger Band, or potentially anywhere in between. And the indicator that's useful for that is the percent %B indicator, which is a built-in indicator in the system. So rather than replicate the percent %B indicator in my own script, I want to be able to call that indicator and get the percent %B value from it. So what I'm going to do is click on insert script up here because there's a built-in script that I can use and scroll down until I find the BB percent B indicator and I'm going to choose the B value from that indicator. I know it's the B value uh, and that's why I chose it but you can actually go into the script and take a look to see what values are available and what they actually do. But I'm just going to select B here and click OK. And what you can see here is it's just put the name of the script surrounded by quotes. So it's going to call that. But what I would also like to do is assign that value to a parameter or a line output line name in my script. And I'm going to call that line B. So B is going to be equal to uh, Bollinger Band percent %B with parameters of 20 and 2 and the B line output from that script uh, with a semicolon at the end always to end a script line. So what I'm going to do now is just save this as and I'm going to save it as uh, uh, and you'll note I haven't put the cross in there yet i.e. crossing through a band I've just put the percent %B indicator that's fine I just want to be able to test this but eventually this is going to be a cross up so I'm going to call it percent B cross cross up and click on save. So I note that it compiled okay, so that's good. And if I close this window, if I go up to now the my scripts area, you'll see that I have percent B cross up as a script in here. If I double click on this, it's going to add that script into a brand new chart area, and I can see that it's outputting a line, and that in theory should be the percent %B line. So what I'll do now is open this back up in the editor and we can start to make some additions here. So in order to see if there's a cross of a certain level what I can do is say I'm going to define a script line called event and that event is going to be a cross of B, the value here that we have in the previous line, through 1 that's the upper Bollinger Band. When percent %B is 1, that is uh, the, the prices at the upper Bollinger Band. So that's what we're doing with that line. If I just click on Save, you'll notice the chart has updated to give me now a second line, and that is my event line. 
you'll see in the chart area, it's red and it's uh, the event line here is red. So it's called event and the blue one is the B line and that is the percent %B actual value. Okay, so whenever percent %B crosses above one, we're gonna get a one value in this event. So pretty straightforward event there, uh, just triggering whenever percent %B crosses over one. But I also said that I'm interested in what happens if percent %B crosses above the lower Bollinger Band, in which case you'd wanna put a zero in and so I can do that, save the script, and it's updated here. So this has changed now to show me all cases where percent %B is crossing above zero, uh, which is equivalent to where price is crossing above the lower Bollinger Band. Now let's just confirm on the chart by adding a Bollinger Band area to the chart. So I'll take area BB and drag it over to the main chart area. So now I've got Bollinger Bands highlighted here, and you can confirm just by looking at these events that it's true. This is generated when price crossed above the lower Bollinger Band. There was another one here because price was below the lower Bollinger Band on this bar and on this bar it's above, so that's a cross above the lower Bollinger Band. It's not very flexible if you have to go into the script and change the value from zero to one all the time or any other value you might want to test. For instance, you might want to test percent %B values of, of 0.1 or 0.2 or 0.3. Um, and so on. So what we want to do there is really put a parameter in to allow us to change this when we uh, are, are using it. So if we go to the parameters tab in this script and I'll create a parameter called threshold, it's a double and you can put a default value in, um, can be whatever you like, I'll say a default value is going to be one. You can put a minimum value in and uh, just for uh, simplicity here, I'm going to put negative 100, we'll never get to that, and I'll put plus 100 for the maximum value. I know percent %B is really only going to range between uh, somewhere below the zero level, never get to negative 100, but I just put that in as, uh, our, as absolute minimums and maximums to allow me the flexibility to set it to what I want. Okay, and then go back to, if I press enter here, and then go back to script and replace this zero with threshold and press save. Okay, so now if I go to the area, the chart area down here, and make sure that's highlighted, and then go over to formula parameters, and I can pin that also to the left-hand side, I can now see that there's a parameter here called threshold, and I can easily change that between zero, and now I can see all cases where price is crossing above the lower Bollinger Band, and if I set it to one, I can now, it's given me an event whenever price crosses above the upper Bollinger Band. So visually now I can see that that is doing what I want it to do. And if I want to find out when price is crossing above the mid band, which is the 20 period moving average, that's the 0.5 level of percent %B. So I'll set that to 0.5, and these are all the cases where price crossed above the mid band. Okay, so I have a script that tells me whenever price crosses above a certain level of the Bollinger Bands, which is great. Now I'm just going to also create a script which uh, will tell me when price will cr crosses down below either the upper band or the lower band or any of the variations in between. Uh, so what I'll do here for simplicity is I will, I'll take my existing script and just copy it. I'll close this one down now and then I'll say create a brand new script here and I'll paste what I had in to here. And this time, in order to, to detect a cross down, I can just change the order of B and threshold. So make it threshold and B. Um, and it has to be the same capitalization. And of course, I've created a new script. It doesn't have that threshold parameter in, so I'll just add that in here too. Uh, I'll set the, it doesn't matter what your defaults are, but I'll set that to a one, um, minimum and maximum 100, okay? and make sure that compiles and I'll call it percent %B cross, whoop, cross down. Click OK, close that down and now you'll note in the my scripts area I've got a percent %B cross up and a percent %B cross down and if I double click on percent %B cross down 
I've now got all cases here highlighted in red, a red event. Whenever percent %b crosses down through, currently the threshold is one, so when it crosses down uh, through one, that's when price crosses down through the upper Bollinger Band here. So I have two scripts that are gonna be useful now for the remainder of this guide for doing some uh, exploration and testing. And remember, this is just a guide to help you test your own idea. So with your own idea, you will have to create your own script to express that idea. And once you've done that, you can follow along with the rest of this guide with your script to do your own testing. So the first thing that's useful to do is to find out whether the event that I've just defined has any special char characteristics on its own. Does it lead to higher prices than normal or lower prices than normal uh, or more volatility? And so a good template for discovering that information is it to be found in the Pro Tools category. It's called POT, PO for technical event. Uh, stands for probability of touch, probability of expiry for any technical event, and you can run it on multiple symbols. I'm gonna be focusing in this guide on just GLD, but remember you can run templates mostly on multiple, most templates you can run on multiple symbols. And so once I've found this template, I can go and choose a test period. So this is by default running from 2000 to uh, 2016. I'll change that to 1231, 2020. And then I can choose the event that I want to test. So I can just go over to the button here that says choose. It will pop up a dialog box and if I scroll to the top where you find my scripts, I can see that I can choose the scripts that I created. So percent %b cross down and percent %b cross up. So let's choose percent %b cross up. And you can see the outputs here are b, an event. So we want to choose the event output and I'm gonna have the threshold set to one. So we're looking for crossing up through the upper Bollinger Band, essentially. Click on OK here, you'll see it's updated that area. And I'm gonna run this report for 21 days from the start of the event, and I'm gonna report every one day with a granularity of 0.5%. You'll see what that means as soon as I hit run, but first off, I'm just gonna choose GLD from my list over here. So I'll do a Control F to find GLD and click on GLD. So that's the only symbol I have cho chosen. Click on Run. And now I can see the probability of touch. So the report is showing me probability of touch by default, but you can see in the report there's this POE tab as well. That's a worksheet within that report workbook, and that's probability of expiry or probability of ending essentially. So probability of touch, let's scroll that into view a little bit more and I can actually shrink this to zoom out a little bit. And this is a very unique report and very interesting. I can see the number of occurrences of this event in my whatever I chose and I chose just GLD and I chose a certain period of time from 1, 1, 2000 to 12, 31, 2020. You can see that the test event here is percent %b crossing up through one. And let's just explain what this means. We've got a, you can think of this as a center line here at 0%. Um, so the very left hand column, let's zoom in a little bit on that, shows the percent change from where price was at the start of the event. And it goes up in the, whatever the granularity was that was defined, that's 0.5% levels. And the columns here expand out through number of days, so number of days since the event occurred. Starts at two because the day that the event occurred is considered the first day, and it's the close price on the first day. Uh, so that's always gonna be a 0%. So, uh, so it starts at two, which will be essentially the day after the event occurred, the close price. And probability of touch is looking at the highest high and the lowest low up to two days, essentially on the second column. The third column would be the highest high and lowest low up to three days, all the way out to 21 days here. And remember, you can choose the number of days that you're going to look at. And 21 days, it would be the highest high att uh, attained uh, through that period and the lowest low attained through that period, probability of touch. The difference with the probability of ending or expiring is it's not looking at the highest high and lowest low, but it's taking the actual day, two, three, four, five, 
up to 21 and saying where did price end um, and then that's the probability of expiry. So let's look a little bit more at what this actually means in terms of the numbers. So let's take the 10 column here, column K. So this is 10 days after the event occurred. There were 76 occurrences and if you look at the rows, the 0% rows, you've got 100% of those 76 occurrences touched 0% gain. That's what we would expect. Go up one level to the 0.5% and we can see that 76% of those occurrences touched the point, plus 0.5% level. 75% of those occurrences touched the negative 0.5% level. Now, this, is, this report is color-coded so that when you change from the orange area to a red area, that's the 10% demarcation line. So uh, you, no, you might not get exactly 10%, but it's the difference between um, when you go to from a higher than 10% to a lower than 10%, you'll get a, a red, you'll go from orange to red. So let's, let's take a look at the demarcation line here. We go to actually 9%. So after 10 days, 9.21% of the stocks achieved 5.5% uh, have touched the 5.5% level within 10 days. And I go down to the lower area, the lower bound, and you find a number that's similar to that. The, the closest number to that is the 10.53, and that touched a negative 4.5% level. So you can see that this event led to prices that generally hit higher levels than lower levels. An interesting thing to note about this, I'm just looking at it now, about this particular graph is that in a normal situation, a normal distribution of prices, you would expect the line to be fairly even going out here, like a nice uh, bell curve but you'll see that after 17 days, 16, 17 days, prices really start to widen on both the upside and the downside. So that's, uh, that's a little unusual here. But anyway, this is a very quick way of just looking at what happened after the event in terms of prices. Now let's go back to the templates and let's just run this for price crossing above the lower Bollinger Band, so a threshold of zero. Click on OK, and I'll just click Run again. So I quickly have this report as well, and I'll zoom this one out. And you can see this is a bit more normal in terms of the way that this curve expands out to the right. Uh, and what we can do, if we want to see both of these together, is just drag this report and place it into the area on the right we can then see the first report in the area on the left. We can squeeze down the first column to give us a bit more viewing area and just try and line these up so that we can see, get an idea for how these curves differ. Okay, so I've got 8.5% in the top over here and I've got 8.5% over here and this goes down to 12.5%. So the scales of these two uh, charts are now the same. And you can see the difference in that crossing above the upper Bollinger Band leads to wider variations. Whereas crossing above the lower Bollinger Band, um, the the width of this 10% demarcation line is, is lower. And if we take this to the extreme area that we have, we only go out 21 days, we'll see on the crossing above the lower area here, we've got 8.82% of those occurrences led to a plus 7.5% gain touched at some point between the first day and 21 days. And on the downside, you've got 8.82% touched negative 5.5%, right? That's crossing above the lower Bollinger Band. And then we'll go to crossing above the upper Bollinger Band, and you can see that 9.21% of the stocks had an 8.5% uh, touch and 10.5% of the stocks had a negative 7%. So you had much wider variation after across above the 
upper Bollinger Band than you did when crossing above the lower Bollinger Band. So that information in itself is extremely interesting. For a start, you can see that the event leads to prices that are both higher and lower. So you immediately see that not every time price crosses above a certain band, you, you doesn't always lead to uh, higher prices, you know, at least to higher and lower prices. So that's very interesting to know. And it's if you look at the way that, um, or think about the way that options are priced, options are not priced based on technical events that lead to higher or lower prices. They're, ba they're priced based on a built-in volatility, and it leads to a curve that's very similar to this, but in a much more even-shaped curve. So you can kind of relate option prices to, um, which are theoretical, to the actual prices you've seen here, which are the historical variations, which is a very interesting observation. It's really interesting to play around with this and put in different numbers for your crossing up uh, levels, the 1, the 0.5 you could try, which is the mid band, the 0, which is the lower band, but also come in here and uh, try it with the crossing down, crossing down through the lower band instead of crossing up through the lower band, and you'll see very interesting results. So I'll leave that as an exercise, um, and I'll just close these down now. Oh, and by the way, if you ever see symbol not found in your chart, it, it just means that there's no symbol um, defined yet. So you could either go over to the symbols area of the chart and choose a symbol and then zoom it out. Or if you have the chart selected and press the spacebar, you can type in the name of a symbol. I type, type in gold and uh, brings up our gold chart. What I'll do here, now I have the chart showing with an area Bollinger Band and also the two scripts that we wrote. I'm going to save this as a layout. So I'll click on Save Chart Layout and I'll call it My BB, oh sorry, my percent B cross layout. Click on OK. So now I can always get back to that layout. So for instance, say I had an options analysis layout chosen. Uh, if I go up to back up to my layouts and I'll choose my percent B cross layout, it quickly brings me back the chart with my indicators attached. Now we've seen what happened in gold whenever those events occurred, going out over time. Now what we can also try and see is if we go to the Entries and Exits tab in EdgeRater and we have our scripts is we can say percent B cross, we'll take the percent B cross up script, pop it in here, threshold of 1, so it's crossing up through the upper Bollinger Band. In this tab I also need to make sure that I've selected only GLD. If I was wanting to run this on GLD, I'll show you the difference. So if I find GLD and select that, and click on Run, this is now showing me all of the occurrences where price crosses above the upper Bollinger Band in GLD, all of the dates that that occurred. Uh, but if you ran this on the entire list and clicked on Run, you'll now get for the entire history of your list, which goes from uh, 2010 so the, or 2011, the first occurrence was 125 2011, and you can see the number of stocks that had that event. To see an actual chart, you can double click on the event. And this is the reason that we created the chart layout, is now this is choosing a different layout here. I can just quickly go back in and to my layouts and find the layout that I created. That's right here. And now if I just, uh, I can select the grid and I can just scroll around through the grid. And if I have annotations turned on and I click to see, so I've double clicked on the annotation, so it's brought the, the event to the very edge, right edge of the chart. I'll scroll this somewhere into the, into the middle and scale it up a little bit. Wherever I leave the event, that's where it's going to try and put the next one. So as I come in here and scroll around the chart now, I can see all of the occurrences for price crossing above the upper Bollinger Band throughout my entire list. So it tells me a number of things, this particular view. First off, the number of stocks that have the event on any particular day. So days where there's many stocks with that event can be significant. So let's have a look at this. You've got uh, 10 31 2014, where you had 
roughly 39 of these 500 stocks uh, had that event. So you can see what that each of those looks like. Uh, if you do press the spacebar here and choose to look at SPY, you can see uh, what SPY looked like on 10.31.2014, okay, which is right here. But what I'm really trying to do here is just be able to visualize the idea, which is price crossing above a certain level of Bollinger Bands, visualize it and see those occurrences on a chart. Um, but what I eventually want to do is create some kind of trading system using those entry events and defining an exit event as well and uh, knit them together into a trade simulation and we'll do, be doing that in the next video. But this is a, just a good way of exploring just individual entry and exit events on a chart. In the entries and exits you can see the view is listed by column where each date is a separate column but you can also choose to select the grid slash list view and now you see it as a list where each row is a particular day and if there are multiple days with the same symbol having that event then it will actually show uh, multiple days and list the symbol here too uh, and this will also list whatever other parameters you've defined in your script so we defined the event and we also, if you remember, defined the actual percent B level. So now this is showing me what percent B is for each of these each of these stocks on these days, and they should all be above one because the event was crossing above one. Now you can also double click click on these and uh, take a look. And the, at the top of this list is the very last day of the chart, which is 12 24 2020. So we can see what has happened on the very last bar when this event occurred. So these all look tantalizing, you might say, but you have to be careful because this is not unique. The, the event when price crosses above the upper Bollinger Band, it's happened many times, as you've seen before, uh, in these stocks. And so even though this looks like it's now entered into clear territory and it's, it could be appealing as a, as a trade, uh, you have to bear in mind that, that this has happened before. And, let's, and so it's always a good idea to go back and look at previous occurrences. And that's what this list is actually quite good at allowing you to do. So one way of doing this quite nicely is to select, we'll go back to a pre previous day. So I'm scrolling down through this list and we'll just randomly select uh, one here. Now, when this comes up on the chart, it's showing as a bar somewhere in the middle of the chart. So we can immediately see what happened afterwards um, which may not be quite as, uh, it's not the same as looking at the very last bar of the chart. So what we can do is scroll this to the very last bar. I can do that actually just by double clicking on the annotation. It will put it at the last bar. And then whenever I click on any of the other symbols, they're always going to be the last bar of the chart. So for instance, you can find something like this. And now instead of waiting for future days to occur where you can monitor this and uh, to decide whether you want to be trading it, you can make a, a theoretical, hypothetical decision here on a prior bar and then just play this forward day by day to see whether that would have been a good trade. So that's a way to look at individual trades and scroll them forward in a sort of a replay situation. But of course, we have tools here that are going to help you to analyze what happens over a large number of occurrences. And that's the idea of EdgeRater and a lot of these tools. And the next video in this series is all about the analyze phase. So to wrap up this video, I mentioned that I really am gonna be focusing on just one stock during this video series, and that's gonna be GLD. So one of the things that you can do is, as you've seen before, use the checkboxes in your list to just highlight the stocks that you're going to be running against. But if you have a stock in particular that you're going to be running against for an extended period, I find it is easier to create a separate symbol list with just that one stock so that you don't have to keep going through and deselecting or, or only selecting that stock. So let's just quickly do that. We'll go back over to, uh, you could do this in any of the tabs down here, but I'll do this in the templates tab and I'll just click on new list, symbol lists new, 
I'll say my data provider will say it's going to be edge rater and I'll say that the symbol I'm going to be looking at is GLD Let's press tab a couple of times I'll save this list it'll ask me for a name to save it as and I'll call it uh, GLD.txt click on save and I'm going to be updating with 10 years of data you can choose more or less depending on what you want to analyze and then what you want to do is click on the update data and now you can see I've got data in this list from 1227-2010 to 1224-2020 and now over here I can just select GLD and I only have GLD here so I don't have to keep worrying about uh, checking off or on the other symbols as well so that's it I hope you could follow along with what I've done in this video play it back pause it experiment with some ideas and let me know how you get on and we'll see you in the next video